everybody, it's Donna Woods with Photonic Health. In today's episode of Health Made Simple, we're actually talking to my business partner and my husband, Brian Owen. And the topic we're going to chat about today is dogs. And Lola's here to help us today. And Lola is here to help us. Um, we typically uh, talk about horses. That is one of our specialties, and it's the one that we've been um, using red light therapy the most on because horses are big and they're easy to do. They're well, and when they're sick, they're really sick, and it can create a lot of problems. And um, what and and we talk about dogs as well. Yes, but we really don't talk about them and focus on them as much as we should. We happen to have four of them. Lola is our youngest and our smallest. And um, so today I really wanted to talk about dogs because not a day goes by it seems that mm -hmm. we're not using lights on one of our dogs. And so I thought that we could chat today, Brian, about the different ways that we use lights on our dogs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it I think the situation always comes up when your dog gets injured, it's always when it's the most inconvenient time you Correct. could possibly have it happen. Middle of the night, on the weekend, when bets aren't available. 10 o'clock at night. And we happen to have one of ours that's prone to getting hurt the most, which is our hound dog, because he's always out hunting all the time. An example is last night he came in, we're sitting there and we're like, Teagues, you're just not right. Something's not right. Right. And so what we we immediately do is we say, get the red light. Because if you get the red light, light out, it typically takes care of things. So you could tell he was having stomach issues. So I took the handhelds, did all my stomach points. And after that, I took the pad system, just laid it over the stomach, threw it on for 10 minutes. He slept through the night. And by 5 o'clock this morning, he's knocking on the door. He needs to go outside and start running. So things were running off just like normal after that. And right. So a lot of times, it's all you have to do. You don't right. have to really know what's going on. You right. just have to put light on. Well, dogs are sort of like horses in a lot of situations when they're good, they're good, they're good. And then all of a sudden they come in and something's wrong. Yeah. So let's talk about um, Henry. Henry, oh boy. Henry. Henry. Hey, we call him Hank the Yank because he came from Ireland. <laughs> yes. Um, so Henry... Uh, is one of our little terriers and he again is another hunting dog yes and we don't hunt by the way we just happen to be attracted to really smart intelligent breeds <laughs> um who all and because they're so active i think they just naturally tend to get injured more yes they do so um, let's talk about some of the things that's happened to Henry and how we've utilized red light with him. Well, I mean, one of the things that we see from him all the time, because he's always digging for moles, looking for rats. We're on a farm. Yes, the farms have rats. They have hay. They have places for them to live. Mice. And mice. And he's, this, this last two weeks, he's up to, I think, 13 rats we got up because we moved an area of the barn and they were all living in there. And, he got them immediately. So one of the things that does happen is they can get bit. Yeah. And you can get the red light on them right away to make sure you don't get any viruses happening. Take care of any bacteria that was in the area, especially like with the multi-light. I love putting it on blue and eliminate the bacteria, then following it up with the red to get the healing to start happening right away. It takes down the inflammation and starts the healing almost immediately. The other thing he's so prone to come back with, he's so prone coming in running on three legs. So he will pull a tendon a little bit, pull a muscle a little bit. We put the lights on, kind of like I just talked about with Teague's. We'll do the area. So example, if the front shoulder is off, we'll grab a light. We'll apply a red light to the shoulder itself, going through each of the joints all the way down to the paw. And I'll do that both sides of the body, following it up. And if you don't have a pad system, you just do those like what's in the book. And then I follow up by putting a pad on them. And typically the next day, they're always running fine. Right. And so what would happen? How would you approach it if you say you did those, you put them on the areas like the direct areas and whatnot, and it's still 
didn't produce the result that you wanted. Are there other points that you would go after? Oh yeah. Typically the protocol you're going to want to use all the time is do the introductory points or the points to introduce them, which would be the, you know, bladder. Um, the opening points. The opening points, yeah. So governing vessel 14, back way, stomach 2, all these points that are in the book. Following it up with either what I find works really well is the immune boost points or the viral points. Because typically it's one of those two things that is going on. It could be that, right? Um, so that this is like peeling the onion, right? Right. So if that doesn't work... Um, or you're not getting the desired results because I think as humans we're like we want instant repair we want instant gratification mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to remember that it's a matter of healing can happen in layers and it might be a bit of a process so right. how does fascia how would how does fascia run into like henry's front shoulder issues yeah. and and whatnot so i understand where you're going with this so one of the things that we always do on horses and dogs is we do an assessment now i have a video out there showing how to assess a dog it's pretty simple and when you find right away that typically you know they have an issue where their front leg is tighter on one side that's a usually a fascia issue issue so we have in the books fascia release for back and front where we're actually releasing nine muscles in the front nine muscles in the back with using only two points each breaks it very simple to do you don't have to dig down so far and that's the onion you're going to peel is that it always starts with going with it's okay baby <laughs> she's a little tired it always starts with typically structural or muscles the issue you're starting with and that's usually what takes care of most of the issues you have. From there, you can go into meridian points, and you know, of course, you can always get, eventually get into emotional if you know how to do that kind of stuff. But right. usually, we're working with, especially in acute is issues, something that is muscle or structural that's going on. Or so, okay, so that that's going to lead me into, um, and we haven't knock on wood, we haven't had any dogs. Um, that have had any tendon issues. No. However, um, dad, mom and dad had a dog with a CCL tear. <clears throat> Correct. Mm -hmm. And so, can you talk about because CCL tear is one of those really difficult things? L let's back up because I don't think people really understand why and how does light therapy work on tendons and ligaments sure light therapy itself when light especially red running at a proper nanometer which these ours all run at what we call 660 nanometers which is well the nanometer we find is the most helpful from skin all the way down to bone issues yeah, you can range anywhere from 620 all the way up to 690 um, but we have found 660 be the best when that is applied to an area that has an injury, it affects the cells themselves. So it starts the whole healing process where you heal 60-80% faster. But the other thing is it does, it also affects collagen in your body. So there is like 72 different kinds of collagens in your body and one of them being is tendon and ligaments. And so we can stimulate the repair of tendons and ligaments and shorten that time down to almost a third of what it would be without light. So what would happen, so like somebody that is watching this or listening to us and they have a dog that has a CCL tear or a CCL injury or another tendon or ligament injury, I know ideally like if it were our dog, we would just immediately implement our protocol. Yes. However, that can also be a really scary thing for a lot of people because mm -hmm. they want to partner with their veterinarian and they want to be underneath veterinarian supervision um, while their dog is recovering or going through this. So what happens if they opt for surgery? How, like what, tell me what that would look like and what the process right. would look like for somebody that wanted to implement red light into a CCL surgery. So Donna hit a very good point right away is that it is a very good idea to have your veterinarian 
being part of the whole program of, of the healing process and letting the veterinarian know that this is one of the things that you're using because one of the things that hurts the dog more is that during the healing process they're allowed just to run freely and they re-injure themselves so if you choose to work with your vet you, they're going to give you two ways of going about it. They're going to say, yes, we do agree with you on, on, your, on your protocol for the light therapy. Let's try that first and let's move forward. Or they may prove, talk to you and they may say, let's go the route of surgery. So what you're going to do is you're going to red light before the surgery to get the cells prepared for the surgery itself and then red lighting after so you heal 60 to 80 percent faster but one of the biggest things that you want to be doing is doing the opposite side because if you don't do the opposite side typically what happens on most dogs that have a CCL tear because they overuse the opposite side is they end up blowing the other one out and what you want to do is you want to prevent that and that's what using the light will do is it'll help prevent it. Right, and that all of that CCL tear is not quite as straightforward as say your dog came home and he has a big cut. Yeah. So that's why we have a very specific protocol to follow whether you opt for surgery or you decide to go it without surgery. And quite frankly, I mean, CCL tear surgeries are expensive. insanely expensive these days. You know, back when dad's dog incurred, I think this the surgery was like maybe two to three thousand dollars, and I've heard now that five, five to seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, and so sometimes it's a matter of going, do I put my dog down, which is an unfortunate option. Or do I try maybe something more affordable, mm -hmm. um, or, or do I go into hawk because of this expensive thing? Let me explain one thing that people really, really need to know about anytime you have a tendon or a ligament tear, is that there's three phases to the healing process. And typical time of healing in each of the phase without red light, light therapy is three months, six months, 12 months. There was three months where it's very critical, six months where you're starting to heal and you still could possibly re-injure, and then 12 months when it's fully healed. And I always love using my fingers as an example. In the first three months, you've just got the fiber tissues just coming together, but they're very simple that they just can come back apart and re-injure themselves. This is what happens when the horse, when the, when the dog starts feeling a little better and they go, oh, I'm feeling good. And I, they pick up, they run after to whatever they run after like all the time and they re-injure or they injure the opposite side. The second phase is when it knots up. So it becomes this, this thick knot where you can actually feel it. And then the third phase is where the fibers lay back down and now they're interlocked. This is when it's healed. And like I said, going from the first phase from taking three months to only take the three to four weeks is huge okay. because instead of kenneling up a dog for three months you're only kenneling them and watching them for four weeks and, and every right. dog can be a little bit different on that time frame so don't come back to me and say hey it's been three months weeks and mom my dog re-injured himself you have to take each dog and how they're doing and how they're moving and we go through all that in the protocol in the protocol right and the, the thing with that is this is where red light therapy can be a little bit of a double-edged sword because yes. it can accelerate the healing process of those tendons and ligaments. So yay, um, because the faster we can get those healed, the less of the chances there are in injury. However, it also provides pain relief. So that's fabulous, except for the fact that, especially if you have a younger dog, where you go, oh, and you look at him and he goes, oh, he's doing great. He feels fabulous. He's all healed. This is sort of where... And we went through this with your dad with his horse. Right. Because within three weeks, he's like, oh my gosh, the swelling is done and down in the shoulder. She's walking normal. She isn't showing any pain. Can I get on and start riding? Or like, no. 
right. Because right. now you're in the healing process. Yes, she's going to get up and go, but you could re-injure. This is the critical time where you don't want to let your dog or your horse get out and just start burning and going. This right. is where you go into the rehabilitation, where you're going to put your dog on a leash and you're just going to go for an easy walk. Right. And you're going to make sure they can't take off and run. And you're going to start just doing straight line walks, walking, you know, just going to the park and back or whatever you're going to be doing. So you do want to be very careful on how, you know, you want to go that good three to six weeks before the dog is off leash. Right. You want them to start healing. And because the swelling and inflammation is going to go down. And remember in traditional method without red light therapy, the horse, the same horse, the dog will have inflammation, will swell up and will show pain. Right. That's how you know that, that's how the body knows that it's still in the healing process. Like you said, one of the back caveats of red light therapy is you reduce the inflammation, you start the healing process right away and you start and you will not show as much pain. Right. So that's where you got to be a little careful. You know, we had this in a racehorses where all of a sudden the racehorses can go like crazy. We're like, well, no, no, you don't want to do that yet. You want to allow them to heal. So it's three to six weeks to heal anything, no matter how well it looks. So that being said, let's talk about the caveat. Like why would we want, knowing that if we apply red light therapy, um, and it's going to make the dog feel better naturally without having to use NSAIDs or prescription painkillers, why would we still want to continue down that path? Because, well, the one thing that happens anytime you use NSAIDs or prescription painkillers is one of the things that it does, it stops the healing process. Okay. So even though they're out of pain, because of the pain, because they're not healing. So it takes them so much longer for them to heal through. That's where you go the three to six months before the dog is even starting to heal. The advantages of the red light therapy is we bypass that whole thing, we eliminate the pain and start the healing right now. And the other thing I want to talk about a lot is that when you start introducing other drugs, you can have other complications come out of it. So other complications can be stomach issues, digestive issues, um, you know, allergies can come out of it. You can have skin issues come out of it. You can have all kinds, you want to come back up here again? You can have all kinds of issues that can come out of introducing other drugs into the body. The nice thing about light therapy is it doesn't do that because it's allowing the body to heal itself right now. That's awesome. I love that. And this is why, like, so, um, yay, like, that's the reason that we actually put it all together because there are so many downsides and whatnot. So let's talk about, I'm going to say the elephant in the room, but the puppy in the room. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is Lola, and we mm -hmm. introduced her before, and she came to us at 12 weeks of age, and she was three pounds. She was the runt of the litter. Basically she, that itty bitty teeny tiny and so she was pretty weak mm -hmm. and she also ended up with a little um infection on her tail mm -hmm. so you want to talk about that and and what we did like to well, get that cleared up you know this is the advantages of having different types of light systems as you go which you know, what do I want to use for the different size animals? That's why we have the, the standard light, which is so great for puppies. Um, and we also have the Pro Gen 2, or I mean, all three of these lights can be used. You just got to remember how you're going to use them. But typically I love using the standard light on puppies. And what we did is we just red lighted twice a day around that tail area, putting it on for, you know, we, you know of course we did the introductory points, on them and a lot of times they'll start to yawn right away if that happens sometimes they do sometimes and then we did the Bach way and you do each of these points about 30 seconds and then we just went around her tail upper part of the tail lower part of the tail it's like kind of like the clockworks around it and we did a for about 30 seconds each spot so it only took about two minutes right the the recovery like so the other thing was we used the multi-light as mm -hmm. well can you want to talk about that? Yeah, because so the multi-light, the advantages that we had of that was is 
I'm going to try to do this one handed, is we could use some multiple colors. So we used the blue because there was a little bit of infection type thing around it. Um, and if you, and, if, and this kind of a dog, they have what's called a, a screw tail, so it's all inside. So we just would put this right around with the blue, all the way around. And then we also used a lot of green. Green was used to put, take her out of that sympathetic mode, putting her back in the parasympathetic mode. She's not in sympathetic mode right now. I no. mean, <laughs> and then we Brian's did just points that, that and, then, an and then we just did the red. We followed up with the red around the tail. And I would think probably it was almost like three to four days. Yeah, it, was it just, cleared up. Really, it was just cleared up and gone. And really this is fast. really a huge issue with this kind of dog, yeah. is they can get an infection with that tail being inside, and they can actually have to have surgery to get rid of it. So right. we we didn't have any. I guess she likes this spot. Huh? She fell asleep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's puppy sleepy time. Even though she's nine months old, it's her time to go it's, to sleep. It's her time to go to sleep. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> so we've talked about Henry and him coming in with bites and scratches and things like that. We talked about Teeks coming in with upset tummy. We, There's a big one with Teeks we forgot to talk about. We talked about Lola with her infection and immune boost because she was so, you know, weak and, and whatnot. So, so we've talked about lots of soft tissue stuff. So let's talk about bones because yes. this is something that unfortunately happens a lot with dogs and we really don't talk about, we haven't really highlighted Teague's story. So you wanna talk about what happened on New Year's yep. night yep. when all the fireworks went off? This is about five years ago now. It, I think somewhere in four or five years ago, New Year's Eve, my, my hound dog is terribly, terribly afraid of gunfire and um, fireworks to the point where he'll just run out of his mind. And he got caught outside, the fireworks started going off, and this was in his younger ages, so he was about five or six at this time. And he ran out into the highway, which was about, oh, probably 10, 20 acres away from us and he got hit by a car. He got hit in the back left hip and he broke his femur socket, 85% uh, of his femur socket, and pushed it into his spinal area. And so we took him to the vet and they did x-rays and they, found, they, they gave us two options we could do. We could do what's called a femur resection where they actually cut off the femur head so it's just running around, not in a socket, they'll run really funny looking. Or they could send it to the animal hospital and have a five or $6,000 plate put in. And so, but they couldn't get us in for about a week and a half. So we were thinking about doing the femur resection. Right. So we took them home and we applied red light therapy, using the handhelds and we put the pad system on him three times a day for 20 minutes a day at a time. Right. And he just basically laid there and uh, we went back in a week later, he was actually putting his weight down on the paw a little bit and I was in by the bed and I'm like, do we have to do this right now? Seeing we've had such great results already. And they said, no, we can do this now or we can do this six weeks from now. So always ask that question, do we need the surgery right now? Right. Because it may not necessarily be so. And so I said, well, let's let's give this like three more weeks and see what we can do with light therapy. So they, she agreed with that. So we went home and I'm telling you, after four weeks total, he was already running on that leg. So what ended up happening is the light therapy healed the area of the socket right. and created a scar tissue socket for him that he's actually today, he's got maybe about a 10 degree turnout, yes. but you would never know that he has a single issue with him. Right. And we did it all with light therapy. Yeah. So, so as you guys have heard by listening to us, we have a very colorful life, especially because not only do we have seven horses, but we also have four very active dogs. All different kinds. All different kinds. And they all like have different issues. And so this is one of the things, I mean, this is one of the things that we absolutely love about red light therapy is because, I mean, 
we wouldn't be able to afford to have all of the animals that no. we have like from a care perspective if they got every time they got hurt we would have to take them in for medical care and we're not advocating that you don't utilize medical care there, there's times when you need it absolutely but this is one of those ways that we're able to have some control and to be able to help our animals right when they need it not having to wait a day or two and that just uh, you know the other part of it, I really think as, a, as an animal owner is the fact that you can do something and within six hours to 12 hours later they're running back outside again it's just that anxiety that stress that they're okay now and I've taken care of it without having to go you know I gotta take them into the vet today now we gotta go through the next three week process of putting them on medication take care of things and that has a place but there's something about where you can just take care of your dog go out and take care of your horse take them out of colic in 15 minutes and they walk off eating grass and things are good right. that you go <sighs> well and for me um, I know it definitely strengthens our relationship and our bond with our animals. I mean, our hound, like all of our dogs know, like the minute that they aren't feeling well or they get hurt, they come to us and they're like, hey, fix me. And our horses <laughs> are the exact same way. And it's also when they're feeling good, like especially, you know, like yesterday, like I'm out there watching a ride and, you know, I've got three of the horses surrounding me just because it just strengthened they go oh that's my person they they're they're going to provide comfort when mm -hmm. when i can't exactly so um well anything else you would like to add well i you know it's just that i think you know one of the things that i find so many people do call in and say they're just they're scared to use the lights on small animals don't be scared for one, first thing of all, you cannot do any harm and you right. cannot do anything that hurts them. And the animal will tell you if it's too much. So I do want to touch on that a little bit. If, if, if I go to put this light on Lola, let's say I'm putting red on, and this is just too much for her, just back off. Right. Or just come off of her and then just come on and just take your time. The the standard light is a great one because it has this manual pulse feature on it. Right, just push the button. So I can get an animal used to it, pulse it and let go. Pulse it and let go, pulse it, leave it on. And typically it's what's what it takes like three times. Right. And so any any of these lights can do that. So it, don't be afraid to use them. Don't be afraid to put them on. And don't be afraid that you're putting them in the wrong spot. Right. Because putting them anywhere is going to do good for their body right absolutely awesome well thank you so much this has been a lot of fun I've got fun and with the dog i know and um so thank you for joining us today and if you have any questions please if you have any questions or comments please like them and please share this with your friends and help us spread the word of how amazing light therapy can be for your animals Thank you.